Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds Podcast. This is episode 96, entitled Show Me My Data, Query Wrangler with Jonathan Daggerhart. It was published on Thursday the 4th of October 2018. My name's Nathan Wrigley from pictureandword.co.uk, a small web development agency based in the north of England, and today we don't have David Wormsley because we're doing an interview with Jonathan Daggerhart, and that's the way we've decided to do the podcast for a little while. We're going to do interviews, and then we'll have the discussions with David separately. Okay, just a few little bits of housekeeping. If you go over to wpbuilds.com, I always mention this, but I'm going to say it nevertheless. Please go to forward slash deals, where you can grab a whole load of deals on WordPress plugins and various things that we've got. So, for example, at the moment on the deals page, you can get... 25% off Erin Flynn's courses, 20% off Beaver Team Pro, 25% off Main WP, Blog Vault, Malcare, Toolset, and so on and so forth. Also, if you go to the webinars link at the top, we've got a webinar coming up in a little while. We've got it on the 11th of October, and it's with Tom Carlos from Beaver Team Pro, and he's going to teach us how you can use his plugin to speed up your development. Also, we've got the subscribe page where you can go and join us in our Facebook group, our Slack channel. You can get updates with Facebook Messenger. We push all of this stuff out to YouTube as well, and maybe that's a way you'd like to consume it. And as always, I'd encourage you to click on all the buttons underneath the podcast player, particularly the iTunes one, and give us a a nice review. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, some some fairly big news for me, at least, anyway. Over at the giveaways link, if you go to the webpage, wpbuilds.com, and click on the giveaways button, there's a new giveaway in there called Episode 100 Quite Good Giveaway, and I'm very, very excited about this. About a month ago, it kind of occurred to me that it would be quite nice to mark the 100th episode of the podcast, which will be coming up very early in November. And I was wondering, how could I do this? So what I did was I wrote to all of the people who've been on the podcast who have a product or a service and asked them if they'd like to join in a giveaway. Well, they responded really favourably. It was an amazing response. And if you go over to that page, you'll find, I think, possibly the biggest WordPress giveaway I've ever seen. Um, there's absolutely loads in there. There's 177 individual items being given away. It's quite ridiculous. And they range from, well, I might as well go through a list. We've got Missing Letter, Spark Chart, Beaver Builder, Mike Killen, Troy Dean, Micro Themer, WP Foamify, Woopack, Powerpack, Content Snare, Jim Galliano, Convert Pro, Page Builder Framework, um, Joe Casabonas Creator Courses, WP Ultimo, Breezy, Astra, Divi Monk, Kanban WP, um, Ultimate Add Ons for Elementor, W Office, Ultimate Dashboard, JavaScript for WordPress by Zach Gordon, uh, The Courses by Rebecca Gill, uh, Unstoppable by Erin Flynn, another JavaScript course by Zach Gordon, Powerpack for Elementor, yet another course by Jack, uh, Zach Gordon, WordPress development and themes plug, themes and plugins development, Beaver Funnels, Facet WP, Elementor, WP Block Party, Turnkey Website Blueprint Workshop, Cobalt App, Schema Pro, Client Portal, Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder, yet another course from Zach Gordon, this time Gutenberg Development, Smart Slider, ah, and ACF Pro. And I've actually got a couple more in today, which I'm going to add when I get time. Ah! So, basically, this giveaway is absolutely massive. Now, just you know, take it in for a moment. And if you click on the blue button on that page, read the terms and conditions, please, because it's important that you know what you're getting yourself into, where you're surrendering your data to and so on. And then if you're into it, click on the subscribe now button and get yourself into the competition. It's one of those viral things where the more people that you 
uh, sock into the competition, the more your chances go up. So, you know, I mean, obviously it's a sort of a list building exercise for us, but hopefully the giveaway stands uh, by its own merits and it's worth entering. So, yeah, please. I would also encourage you to go and thank the people who've contributed to this because without them, we couldn't have done it. So that's all of the plugin theme course creators who've actually contributed. Might be quite nice if we said thanks back to them. Now, oh, as if that weren't enough, we actually have a, a regular giveaway in inverted commas if you go over to the link. Um, and that's for WP Ultimo. Uh, there's two lifetime licenses for that plugin. It enables you to make turnkey websites from multi-site. So that might be worth entering as well, even though that is also in the giant giveaway. Ha <laughs> ha! Right. OK, I think that's done. Let's talk about today. We've got Jonathan Daggerhart from the United States on today. And if you've been listening to the podcast for any length of time, you'll know that I used Drupal for the longest time. And there is a sublime module, a.k.a. plugin, for Drupal called Views. And it enables you to pull data out of the website and spit it out in literally any way you want, all with a UI. It's utterly, utterly brilliant. Well, when I came to WordPress, I really missed it. I really wanted WordPress to have it. And, and I stumbled across, across Query Wrangler not very long ago. And not only does it look like Drupal Views, but it does an awful lot of the stuff that Drupal Views does as well. So this podcast is all about that. So thanks for listening once again. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Go and enter the competition and hopefully you'll win a boatload of good stuff. Thanks for listening. Hi there, guys. Thanks for making it this far into the podcast. We've got the interview section now. And today, all the way from North America, we have Jonathan Daggerhart. I'm going to say Jonathan Daggerhart. Have I pronounced your surname correctly, Jonathan? That's correct. Hey, Jonathan has joined us today because of something that I, I honestly can't remember how this thread went. But somewhere at some point in the recent past, I got into a conversation about Drupal in the Facebook group. And in that conversation, I said, ah, oh, there's this thing in Drupal that's been there forever called Views. And you can think of it like a plugin. Views is a plugin for Drupal, although they're not called plugins. And Views allows you to kind of query the database with a GUI, a graphical user interface. And I thought, ah, oh, do you know what? Ever since I joined WordPress, I've missed this thing. And Jonathan has written it. <laughs> hey, well done, Jonathan. Do you want to tell us what it's called? Yes, it is Query Wrangler. And it is basically just implements a GUI for the WP Query class. <laughs> it's very cool. I've had a, quite a long play with it this morning. So for those of us that don't know, what is a query and why would we want to wrangle it? Sure. A query is, so in your WordPress site, you have posts and pages, and maybe you have other custom post types. And the way you get a specific list of these posts is to make a query of some sort. You ask the database for a specific subset of posts. And then you once you have the results of that query, you generally output, um, you loop through the results and output it however however your theme wants it to look. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason this is so cool in Drupal, I'm going to talk about Drupal for a bit, is because it allows novices like me to, with point and click, with a few little strokes of the keyboard as well, to select, okay, I would like to show custom post types stuff only, and I would like to show only the title, and I would like to also, under the title, put the image and so on. Now, this sort of stuff in Drupal is trivially easy because of the way it's way it's structured and the, the fact that everybody is using this Views plugin. Everybody knows it. All the tutorials are available for it. But wh why, why don't we have something like this in core for WordPress? Do you, do you have any thoughts on that, Jonathan? Well, uh, I generally think... Uh, I've thought about this a lot. So why is, is there not a demand is really what I've seen, mm. why is there not a demand for this in WordPress? And I think it's because the categories categories of the different types of WordPress users and developers are, there's many more and it, and it spans a broader spectrum. So you have some many WordPress users who all they care about is writing the content and 
Mm-hmm. They wouldn't they wouldn't build custom queries if they had a UI. Then you have like the site builder type, the developer who will build a site for a customer. And that's where it gets a little tricky. And a lot of times what people will do is they'll write their custom queries directly into the theme. And so a theme developer, generally in WordPress, a theme developer already has some experience with custom queries. And whereas in Drupal, a theme developer never has to deal with with creating custom loops or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I think um, I think it comes down to the fact that in WordPress there is the WP Query class that, from a PHP developer perspective, already makes it sort of easy to write a custom query. And the people who aren't in the code, the the more sort of just going to edit the edit the website from the UI, they're not really, generally they don't look for or think I need a custom query. So I feel like there's just this gap between uh, knowing that this is what you need and, and once you know this is what you need, you're probably pretty close to writing your own anyway, as mm. far as, as far as capability. So I, I, I think that's a decent explanation. Uh, yeah, no, that's good. I, I was just st- sort of struck when I got into WordPress a few years ago, how because there's like a plugin for everything, there's usually like a little tiny niche little plugin which will satisfy just about any kind of query that you want to perform anyway. Whereas in Drupal, because there's views and because it's, you know, it takes a little bit of time to understand how the, the plugin in inverted commas works... But give it give it a week, and you can you can simply write anything. You could create any kind of layout really quickly. Whereas in WordPress, because you've got to actually write that code, and that is too much of an obstacle for some people, you go out and you find this plugin solution to satisfy that. And if it's not exactly what you want, you probably just put up with the gap. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I think. I think the fact that there isn't something like this, it's probably keeping the users who just want to edit content over sort of in that bucket of not being able to or or not knowing how, how easy it could be to expand what to expand the site in the ways that they want or mm-hmm. just let their imagination sort of drive what they can and can't do with their site. Yeah. Um so I I sort of see this as like a bridge between those two types of users, like the user who is happy using the UI and then the, the user or developer who can edit their custom theme. And so jumping from just happy to use the, the UI to editing your code to huge, it's a huge leap. And yeah, I feel is. like yep. plugin plugins like this that give you a UI for doing something developer-y, developer-like, yeah. um, are, are the bridges that sort of take um, let users sort of progress in their capabilities as a site owner or as site developers. Well, when I was playing with it a little bit earlier, we'll come back to this, but when I was playing with it a little bit earlier, the I love the bit at the bottom where the where you output what the what you're actually doing. I just think that's lovely. So you can actually see what the query is. It's all written there for you. Anyway, we'll come back to that a little bit later. So it sounds to me like you're into Drupal as much, if not more, than you're into WordPress. Which where do you sit? Are you a are you a full time WordPress guy or a Drupal guy or are you fifty fifty or what? I am I am a full time Drupal guy mm. who who really respects WordPress. <laughs> it's not yay, I, good for you. <laughs> yes. I I see both as um both as tools and there are right tools for for the job. And so I was a full-time Drupal developer when I started sort of working on websites, you know, friends and family level development. And my first real job at a web agency was at a WordPress agency yeah. and that's where I learned WordPress and I just I just sort of learned to love them both and I don't and I don't really get caught up in the one is better um one is like definitely better and the other is bad I try to just <laughs> recognize what each is good at so my next question is which is better no um no so the the next question is if you are doing your day job which is uh, for an agency working exclusively with drupal do you do you do you just sort of play with wordpress 
Uh, sorry, yeah, that's I think I got that the right way around. Do you play with WordPress of an evening, or is there a small segment of your work which is uh, devoted to WordPress at all? At the moment, I only play with it in the evening, and my personal website is right. WordPress. Okay, okay. So I, uh, I'm, I'm able to keep up with what's going on because I have a lot of WordPress friends, and I have to maintain my own website. But I believe that my agency is branching out from Drupal into also WordPress yep. In, yep. in the future. Does there, again, we're not really talking about the, the plugin yet, but I'm, I'm so interested in the Drupal WordPress thing just because of my heritage. Um, I moved away when it went to Drupal 8. And for those of you that don't know, when Drupal moves from 6 to 7 or 7 to 8, or I think I began with Drupal 4. Um, the, 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 the change can be groundbreaking. It can be a bit of an earthquake and sometimes you have to rewrite everything. Has there been, as far as you know, a move away from Drupal when it, when it ticked over into eight or has everything remained solid? Cause the fact is we know that WordPress has been growing during that period of time, but I don't know what's happened in the Drupal space. Is it still going strong? Well, I don't know as far as numbers. All I can give you mm. is my impression. Mm. So if there is a Drupal developer listening and uh, you know better, then feel free to know better. But <laughs> I, I, have, I have certainly seen people uh, saying that it's too big of a leap from seven to eight. It's too much. They, they were, uh, and they have moved to WordPress or some of them have moved to Backdrop CMS, ah, which is yeah, a, yeah. a fork of Drupal 7. So... But it kept Drupal, it kind of, it didn't, what what did it not do? It didn't use, was it Twig, the template engine or something? They kept something the same. Yes. So it's, it's a fork at Drupal 7 that continues to improve from a Drupal 7 perspective. So Drupal 8 is where they adopted Twig and a lot of object-oriented programming. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and so this, this like a, this is Drupal 7, but from a from a continuing to improve perspective, it's got a lot of updated code and they've put a lot of, a lot of the contributed modules that you would download anyway into core. Mm. So for example, views is in backdrop core. Mm. So um, I've seen plenty of people basically say Drupal 8 was too much and they've gone to WordPress or they've gone to backdrop. Yeah. Well, I, I have just nothing but good things to say about Drupal. I just wanted a change. I couldn't really put my finger on it. But I, when that moment happened, I just felt, okay, let's explore something else. And I fell into fell into the WordPress thing, and, and here we are. So let, let's talk about um, the plugin, Query Wrangler, which um, I should say is freely available on the, the WordPress.org repo. What it what would be a like a typical use case? Why would somebody go out and search for this plugin? And, and can can you think of an example that you've said many many times before where people have said, ah, yeah, I want to do this, and this plugin achieves that beautifully? Sure. So uh, one example would just be say you want to just show your three most recent posts in a sidebar widget. Um, that is super easy in yep. uh, Query Wrangler. So Query Wrangler lets you build the query with a UI, just sort of select what you're asking for and what is shown on the page. And then you can display that query once you build it as a widget, or you can drop it into place as a short code. So that's a very simple use case is just three most recent. Um, even on my website, I have just most recent post style widgets in my sidebar. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think that's sort of just the, the easiest uh, example. Yep. So you can, um, as I'm looking at it, I'll describe in a, a little bit more detail what's possible. So the way that it works is you, you create this query and then depending on how you want to kind of like filter that or the amount of posts you want to show or the order that you want to put them in. You, you can, for example, um, turn on or off the, the, the title of the post. So it'll either display that or it won't. Um, you can display Now, this is interesting. I'm looking at the template style. I remember this um, mm -hmm. in Drupal Views. You've got three options here. You can either output whatever is output as an un just unformatted. You've got an unordered list. You've got an ordered list and a table. Um, is there is there any reason why you you might 
choose one over another there? Sure. It's there. The table format is really useful as far as uh, creating dashboards. Nice. So, yeah. so sometimes you'll, you'll want to create just a simple page that provides an administrative overview of something, some type of custom post format or, um, or just something more data centric, I guess, is what tables are for. Yep. And so you, you can just build your query and choose, I want this query to look like a table. So you could, for example, let's say you've got a custom post type of cars or something and that you've, you've sold this site on to somebody who sells cars. You could list out all the most recent cars so that they could then click on a button and go and edit that post, that kind of thing. So like an admin interface. Yes, exactly. That's so cool. I mean, th there, there are other ways of doing this for sure, but that, this is such a, a nice, simple way of doing it. You can, what else can you do? Let me just have a quick look. Let's cancel out of that one quickly. Um, you've got row styles. Tell us about this. What's the row style setting about? So the row style, if you think of we, we've gone in and queried for 10 posts, then for each of these posts, how do you want that one row to look? Mm -hmm. And... So the default way is the field style, which lets you pick and choose each and every field you have you have shown per row. But I've I've added the the post style is will actually go get your themes template for a post, and it will show each row using that template. Huh, that's nice. Yes. Uh, and then there is for the more if if you are really into theme development, there's the template part row style, yep, which yep. is essentially where you can define exactly which template from your theme will show this row. So that's another sort of bridge between um, like that that brings us closer to something that a developer may use when building out a site for a client. So you've got really granular control if you are willing to put in the time and understand how this template part section works. You've got granular control and you can make it look literally however you want. Exactly. Ah, nice. Yeah. So the, the next option down here is just how many posts per page. So for example, the default, I think is five. It'll just say the top five. Is there any sensible limit that should be applied there? Obviously, if we've got like 7 million posts on our website, <laughs> is there any, does it, does it, um, presumably it doesn't go looking for them all and then just show the top five. Is it doing something a bit more clever than that? Well, it's actually taking all of these settings and, and, putting them into the WP query class. Mm -hmm. So the WP query class will, uh, has plenty of default settings and, and those defaults are like, I think post per page is 10 by default. Yeah. Uh, as far as reasonable settings, generally you probably don't want to go anywhere over a hundred no. <laughs> just because, uh, uh, and if you do need to, there is a, there's a way to have a pager so yeah. you can page back and forth between uh, different different subsets. So if so, uh, uh, another selection further down is, is pager and you can select for yourself what you want the, um, how to describe it, what you want the previous button to look like or what you want the next page button to look at. So you could write arbitrary text, you could write previous with a, you know, a less than sign and a greater than sign for next or what have you. Are you able to input um, any HTML or, or anything in there that you might be able to style with CSS? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I know it'll take a, so it expects HTML entities of sort. So the, like there is an HTML character for an actual arrow looking thing yep. as far as, um, and that is fine. I honestly don't know as far as i'm gonna uh, try that <laughs> yeah let me I'm, uh, i'll I try that touch. later see if i can put in a like a style or something like that and see if it outputs it correctly i mean presumably though you're you're wrapping this stuff in uh in searchable um elements so you could find the div that does the previous and the div that does the next or whatever it is that you're using and, and target that and style it with a button or whatever absolutely yes all of these things all of the entire parts of the query are templated uh, within Query Wrangler. And so everything everything that you that is shown by the plugin has should have plenty of classes you can hook onto with your CSS and divs and whatnot. And the 
the templates that the system used can actually also be overridden by your theme. Right. So you can, you can take the, for example, if you set the template style to table, you can go into the plugin and copy that table template into your theme and make it look however you want for your theme. You can add extra HTML or classes. Okay. Um, another nice option, which I remember using extensively with Drupal, was this kind of like empty text. So if the query returns like a null value, you can then substitute it with something. Um, I'm trying to think of an example where that's actually useful, but the, it is, trust me, it's really useful <laughs> loads of times. <laughs> you want it to say, sorry, there is no, there is not, nothing available for this search. Right, yes. Uh, I know the the header, footer, empty text stuff, all of that definitely accepts HTML. Oh, okay, yeah, because it's a great big text box. It kind of looks like it should. Yeah, but that's good. Um, okay, then we move on to the, this kind of like the fields that you can uh, import. There's a whole field section in the middle. Now, I've got this on a default install of WordPress. It's completely vanilla, and I used FakerPress to fill it up with uh, jargon posts, but that's it. That's all I used posts. So I guess my next question is around custom post types and fields and things like that. Does this, does this play nice with, um, custom fields and custom post types? And are there any you know, notable plugins that it does or doesn't work with this, t which take on the task of creating custom post types and fields? Yes. Yeah, so I, I, use advanced custom fields and um c cmb2 yep um plenty myself and okay so the way these fields work is it's got all the general post properties that are on the post object so it's got your post title post type post id all the stuff that is default out of wordpress is represented as its own field in this checkbox of fields you can add to your query but also it's got a it's got a custom field checkbox. And what that is is that will go get any meta value that is stored on the post. So all of the all of CMB2, um, advanced custom fields, all of these, they're just different UIs for yep. the exact same concept on a WordPress post, which is meta metadata or um, I guess yeah, metadata. Yeah, about, stick with that, yeah. About the post. <laughs> yeah sure. Yeah. And basically, it's just a, a a database field that you can put anything you want to into. And so it's kind of up to that plugin, the field-related plugin, as to how it stores its data. And um, and all, all you need to know is the name, the meta name, I guess, for that field. Mm -hmm. And so in Query Wrangler, if you add a new field, there's a checkbox for custom field. And if you add that field to your to your query you can then just provide the key that's it instead of name the key that'll for your yeah, yeah, yeah. for your custom field and that'll that'll go get the value and uh during the query and there's a couple of ways you can choose to to deal with that value so for example like a cmb2 say um this may be off the rails but just take an example say you have a custom field plugin that lets you upload an image. Well, what it's going to store in the post metadata for that image is just the ID for that image, mm -hmm. for that set of media. So in Query Wrangler, you just add a custom field, you give it the key for that field, like my custom image or whatever you set up that field for. And then you can, cho then you can say like, okay, this field expects to be an image ID and you can output you can output that field as an image right there. Okay. So would you wrap that in sort of like an, an image tag or something, or would it just output it as an image regardless of what you did? No, it'll, it'll output it as an image. If right. you say, if you say, I know for sure this field is an image ID, then query Wrangler will template that. It'll, it'll go get that metadata for the, it'll go get the image ID and then it'll load the image data such as like the URL where yep. that image is stored and then it will wrap that in an image tag for you. Is there the possibility to wrap the fields themselves in HTML? Because I used to do that with views in Drupal all the time and again I cannot think of why but let's say for example there was a checkbox um, and I wanted it on or off and it had a value of one or zero. I could alter whether that field was one or zero. I could alter, for example, the background color of a div or something like that and make this stand out as red. 
Um, so that checkbox might have been uh, highlight it, highlight this field or whatever. Can you do that kind of stuff? Can you wrap it around and put put data from other fields inside of HTML elements? Yes, that is if that when you're editing a field, there is a section named exactly what it's called in views called rewrite the ah, output of this field. Where is that? <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> yeah. So if you check rewrite the output of this field. Oh, at new, the bottom. God, I yep. see it. Yeah, there you it's, go. New box will open up and yep. you can put your HTML in there. And there are tokens you can use in that box, which will represent the data or the output of yep. other fields so think, in your query. Think of it almost like a short code or something and you wrap around. Yeah. That, oh, great. This yes. just gets better and better, Jonathan. I'm really <laughs> excited about this. Genuinely. I, I can't express how useful this is going to be. It's almost impossible to underestimate what this is capable of. But needless to say, if you put... And that's the knob of it, isn't it? The problem here is it's not... How to describe it without without sounding offensive? Um, th <laughs> this stuff is not it's not as straightforward as a lot of the stuff that you've been used to in WordPress. It, there's a there is going to be a learning curve if you want to get with get to grips with this, but it's powerful. Um, do you have any tutorials or anything online that you can that we can look at? Yes, uh, I believe on the the WordPress plugin page for it, there is a a very old i think the last time i made a tutorial for it was it could be four or five years ago okay but let me take a look um oh no uh I, I did not put i have not put a tutorial on the plugin page let me check my youtube real quick <laughs> see if it's on there the thing yeah. what, what i would say is whilst you're checking that is the power you'll, you'll see this ui and you'll think what what does it even do because it's not what you're used to with wordpress um, click on the little preview or examine the preview query underneath and it shows you kind of in in Drupal it showed you in real time it would appear that with query Lang Wrangler you have to oh no maybe it doesn't you, you've got to click save and then it'll refresh the query itself underneath but you'll be able to see what you output um, immediately and you'll immediately start to pick up what this is capable of any YouTube video it looks like no. So I need to make a t How have I never made Deep a tutorial? Breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it would help, wouldn't it? And of course, yes. uh, you know, and uh, coming up with a, I don't know, a, a good example might be like the car one that we did earlier, where you can just quickly demonstrate how to show a range of cars and all of the data that's associated with that car. Um, okay. and, and a lot of people will be reliant on a plugin and they won't know how to write that query and this this will quickly output it. And the beautiful thing is, like I said earlier, the bit that we were going to come back to, you've actually taken the time to show what the query is underneath. What was the thinking there? Well, it's more about bridging. It's more about bridging from one type of user to the other. Yeah. I, um, well, Originally, it just originally I just sort of output the arguments as as the way the plugin was building it, so that I could sort of check myself that I was building it correctly. Okay. But then, but then once I had that, I was like, okay, we are one step away from just giving them the PHP they need to execute this query on their own. And so, with that in place, like uh, I feel like it's a really strong bridge between the user who's very comfortable with the GUI and, and the theme developer or plugin developer who um, wants to sort of learn to make their own queries. Mm. I, think, um, I think you could use this to learn how to make WP queries. Yes, and that's what I'm, I was thinking. It's like a, it is a tutorial in itself, isn't it? It absolutely could be used that way. And I, um, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So if you start with the the vanilla version of the plugin and just look at the output underneath the preview window, you'll be able to see uh, a very basic query. And then the more stuff that you add in, you'll be able to see a, a more complicated query. And obviously, if you throw a, an image in, well, how does that work? What if we want to have it organized descending as opposed to ascending? How is that done? And you'll be able to just watch. You'll be able to track the little PHP changes um, on all the arrays and all of the things that are going on and work out what's being done. That's, I think, bizarrely, I think that's one of the best features of this plugin, just the fact that it can <laughs> teach you this stuff that, that you could then presumably memorize and go off and do for yourself. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I've, I've learned a lot about the WP query class and I hope <laughs> that, I hope that, that this could help teach people because I'm really passionate about educating people because yeah. education's empowerment, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, good, 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 good. but, but yeah, you could, this would be a good start in learning how to use WP query, mm. just build it comfortably and then copy that code to a template file somewhere and, and go to town. The, the, the Drupal plugin obviously is a, is a combined effort by many, many, many people. And you've done this uh, by yourself. Is there anything that you, you had to leave out because it just wasn't working or it was a bit janky or you didn't like it? And, and do you have things that you are intending to add in should you have enough time? Yeah, so the 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 two most noticeable things I believe, if you're coming from Drupal and you're very comfortable with views, uh, the two most noticeable things you'll be missing are relationships, mm -hmm. which lets you pull in other posts that are related to um, to one of the posts in your current query, mm -hmm. and the other thing is that you can't query users or comments. Hmm. or taxonomy terms this you can really only query post and i don't know how often that comes up for the average the average site need as far as do you need to list users somewhere but in drupal since everything is sort of standardized around these generic entities that and like a user and a node or sort of based on the same foundational concept of an entity mm -hmm. uh, it was it's relatively straightforward to make something generically interoperable between mm. all those different types of entities. But in WordPress, uh, a user and a post are significantly different as far as how they're queried, how they're output, like the template tags for both are completely different if a user even has template tags. And so that's, that's probably the, the question I get the most in the support forums is, can this query users or can this query taxonomy terms? And I'm constantly having to say, no, sorry. Uh, so I, I have thought a lot about it and I've done a bit of work on bringing that concept into Query Wrangler. And it would take a, it would take a big effort, I suppose, probably a... <laughs> probably a few weeks full time to feel comfortable enough to releasing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just not really sure if that is on the horizon. Yeah. R relationships I've, I've done before and I left out purposefully because I thought the concept might be a little, a little much considering in, in Drupal creating a relationship between two different nodes or what, a node in Drupal is like a post yeah. in WordPress. Yeah. So, so creating a relationship between two different posts in Drupal is part of the core sort of mechanisms. It's you can create a reference from one to the other easily. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, when you're querying it and you want to make use of that reference, it's expected that this is how things work. Um, and it's a little more natural to the system. Here, what what I would have to do is it would, it wouldn't be that hard to implement relationships. And I've done it as an experiment before, but the, the difficulty in describing what that is like <laughs> seems a bit more daunting from WordPress perspective, because yeah. what it means is it would mean that somewhere in a post you've created a new custom field that has an ID for another post. Yes. And, and you have to know to do that. And then you have to know exactly your intended outcome for that. Yes. And then you have, and then you have to know that query Wrangler can do that. And you have to want to use query Wrangler to do that. So there's a lot of, there's a lot more steps in, in the need for relationships, I guess, in the WordPress world. And so I've just sort of left it to the side because, um, because it, it complicates the system a lot to add that new feature. And so far people haven't really demanded it. I'm mm -hmm. not sure in the past eight years or so, maybe, uh, 
uh, maybe six or seven years. I'm not sure I've ever had a request for relationships. You will now. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> what you need is a tutorial, and you've built it, yes. <laughs> provided tutorial, and then we'll all be able to see how it works. Um, so, yeah, you you were saying that um, you've had this going for eight years, which is remarkable. Have, have you? Um, is this the sort of thing that you come back to an update once a year or twice a year? Does WordPress has WordPress done anything which has kind of killed it temporarily, or has it been fairly stable and plain sailing? It's been fairly stable. If someone submits a bug that is easy to sort of identify, duplicate, and fix. I'll, I'll make a new release pretty quick on top of that. Mm. Um, otherwise, I, um, I try not to fiddle with it too much because I, I, I love playing with it, and I can't tell you how many times I've written code for it or I've changed this or that, and then I've thrown it away because I just sort of really enjoy the experimentation. Mm-hmm. But, I'm not, but I'm not ready to, to put an additional burden on the users yeah. because in, in my experience, there's plenty of WordPress users who, and I'm thinking like a site owner, somebody who built their own blog and that's the only site they, they manage. Um, plenty of them will just sort of set and forget as mm-hmm. far as like they'll build their site once and then they'll just keep clicking update and they don't expect problems. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Because WordPress has built that into their community that's, as far as that's its thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, backwards compatibility. Yeah, and so there's been plenty of times where I I wanted to do much more, but so I sort of felt that it was unfair to risk someone's website with an update script for like for the convenience of me, the developer. Mm. Like like at this point, you know, eight years later in my development life. I'm very unhappy with some decisions I made in this plugin, <laughs> and, but I keep asking myself, is it worth me being happy in sort of a background way that no one knows anything about, but me, because it's just, it's all in the code for, the, is that worth risking a user's website? As yeah, far that's as a really nice way of putting it. I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I right now it's very much in maintenance mode. If there's a bug, I will fix it. Mm. If there is a new feature that uh, somebody asked for and it's just dead straightforward, I will I will add that and move on. But generally, I don't constantly work on this thing. Yeah, one of the one of the big differences in Drupal uh, to WordPress is this idea that essentially in Drupal, I think everything's free. Um, pretty much every you know, there's no paid tier for. Maybe that's changed. I don't know. But since when I was there, I, I didn't know of any module, a.k.a. plugin, that was uh, paid for. Um, but then in WordPress, there's a lot. Do you do you ever intend, have you ever thought about monetizing this and, you know, putting extra features in for a subscription, for example? Oh, I, I've definitely thought about it. And I had another plugin that I had a freemium model with. Mm-hmm. It, um, You know, if you paid for a license, you got more features. Yeah. And ultimately, I found that I was not happy with that at all. Mm. Um, I guess I have, I am too, I am too Drupal in, <laughs> in that in that world. Like I believe that things should be free, um, and not to. I mean, there's a lot of caveats to that, obviously. But I believe what. Let me just speak from experience. What I found with this other plugin, once I made the freemium model and I had this pro version. I found that I wasn't happy working on it anymore. Now, now I have people who are paying and therefore can demand of me mm. s- support. Like I owe them more, mm-hmm. um, and and because I owe it, because they paid for it, like my my labor has become theirs to decide, and it became less of a fun thing and more of a burden huh. on me on me personally yes and i wasn't happy with that and i hadn't updated that plugin for like a while i was doing bug fixes as demanded by my paid subscribers yeah but but i wasn't happy working on it because it didn't feel right like i i would put hours into some fixing something 
that only a small percentage of the plugin users would benefit from. Ah, isn't that interesting? What a what a, what a strange but important kind of psychological <laughs> twist on it. Um, yeah, the idea that if you've got paying customers, it's some it, it, it's kind of irritating, isn't it? That they can say to you, "We must have this." It um, is. You, yeah. you know, jump, come on, <laughs> we've thrown the bone, go and fetch it. <laughs> right. that's, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and of course, so, I guess that's the WordPress way. Yes, it uh, it it works. It works for WordPress, and if you can build a company around premium plugins, which plenty of people do, it seems relatively successfully in most in cases. Uh, and you, if you build your company that way, I think it absolutely would work. And I could see myself being more happy with a premium plugin if I. If I said like, okay, this is going to be a plug-in company now, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna ha- have someone answering these support questions, it's yeah, not yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, mm. I could, I could see that working a bit differently than I'm just an average guy who now I have to answer these support requests because somebody paid me fifty bucks one time a year ago. Mm. Um, you know, it's a. Uh, it's just sort of it, it didn't work for me in my situation. I, and, I can get it. I totally get it because it just feels like unless you're, it, I don't know what the point would be, but let's say the point arrives where suddenly your annual salary is being paid by the plugin. Uh, maybe at that point that's your job now. Whereas if you're yeah. if you're halfway there or a quarter of the way there, then it, it's just sucking the time. And yeah, yeah, I, I can understand yeah. that. Yeah, it's interesting. So because of that experience, I'll never have a another premium plugin unless I decide to open a premium plugin company, which is not, <laughs> it's not anywhere on the horizon for me. <laughs> All I can say is we, we've kind of used up about 40 minutes, which if, if it's okay with you, we'll possibly knock it on the head. What I would sure. say to anybody who's ever tried to get data out of a custom post type or a post or any part of WordPress, and you kind of struggled with the, how do I get it from, the post onto a other thing. How do I display that? Go and check it out. Stick with it. Give it a day. Try it. You know, click the buttons. See what goes wrong. See what goes right. And and you know, give it some time because I, I honestly think there's a, an awful lot of benefit in here. One thing I would say is um, we we talked about this before the before the uh, podcast was recorded. We we both I think share the feeling that in WordPress sometimes people. Uh, have beautiful things. They spend a lot of time making things look beautiful. In Drupal, eh, not so much. Things just kind of work and that's kind of where it is and you have to make it beautiful yourself. So be prepared for that is all I'd say. You know, it's it's going to output stuff, but then it's on your back to make it look nice. Would that be fair? <laughs> That's absolutely fair. <laughs> yeah. So if you get a row of uh, text and it's not the, why can't I make the font color different? Well, you'll have to figure out another way of doing that. But getting the data out and sticking it somewhere else, that's what this is for. And it's perfect. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you get a few new users from this podcast. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me. You are very, very welcome. Welcome.